I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. You got to love it. Let me see what we've got. Oh, oh, there we go. Good. Just checking to make sure everything's working. How is everybody doing? Uh, man, this is Monday, the first Monday of the new year. If you're catching this on the live stream, welcome to the show. Glad that you're here. If you're not, if you're catching this on a video replay and you were searching for something, Man, you may want to hang out for the video and watch and see what we do. This is live plumbing Q&A. What I would recommend is if you were looking for something in particular, please go over to the YouTube channel, hit the search bar up top, search what you're looking for. We've got videos covering all kinds of things. This is why this is great. We talk about all things plumbing, whether you want to get into the trades, whether you're an apprentice, a journeyman, you want to get better, whether you're a journeyman, you want to open your own business, or you're a service company owner and you want to grow using social media Man, how did I do that? There we go. Man, I hope y'all heard all that. Um, I don't know how I hit the beginning button, but I hope that y'all caught all that. Anyway, good to have you here. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And man, I think we fixed it. How are y'all? Uh, I'm going to look in the chat real quick and see how everybody is. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, Liz, we do need to adjust these cameras down just a little bit. They're both just a little bit too high. And yeah, I'm on the other camera right now. So yeah, you can go ahead and adjust that one down. Perfect. Oh, right there. It's good enough. Uh, come up just right here. We're fixing things. That's good. I like it. Now if you can get to the other one. I know. Good luck. Uh, needless to say, it's a little crowded in here, but we are having fun. Uh, how are y'all? Everybody in the chat, tell me, number one, where you're at and what you're going to do different this year. Uh, what have you got planned? What is it you have in store? And, man, are you ready for it? 2020 turned out to be a, a pretty good year for us. Come on down a little bit more. One more time, just bump it. Oh, perfect. Now let me check the focus on that. Check your autofocus because I don't think, there it is. When I say it is, check your autofocus. Anyway, so hey, tech happens. It is what it is. We are having fun. I see we've got Miami, Florida in here. Oh, happy new year from Hawaii. Nothing to do with plumbing, but love your videos. Randall, thank you so much. And... Scroll back up in here. Greetings from Utah. Austin is in town. Uh, for some reason, Liz, I still don't have focus over here. And it's not. There he is. There, maybe. You know, it's trying to do it's trying to focus on the mic. So anyway, I think I got it right there. Sorry, guys. We, we are playing and having fun and learning and trying to make things happen. There you go. Good. So you're good. Uh, back in the chat real quick, we got Utah, we have got Las Vegas, New Mexico, Grayson, you're still hidden. Grayson, I'll tell you what, I don't know how that works. Got Will in the house, good to have you here. Uh, Missouri, Mike Barfield in Wearsdale, Florida. I, know, I don't know how y'all keep Grayson hidden. Uh, let me try this, boom. I cannot moderate the video owner. So it's showing Grayson as a video owner. Grayson, unmoderate yourself. We got California in the house. Springfield, Missouri, Mr. Joe Everest. Man, I tell you what, between Joe Everest and the Urban Explorer in here, Sean Strong in here, man, we got some good people in here. Uh, things are going well. So, you know, the neat thing about it is we do have some great people. What's wrong? Oh. Two manual. Okay. Uh, 
So anyway, we got some great people in here. If y'all have not followed Sean Strong, Neil the Urban Explorer, Joe Everest, man, got some great people in here. Uh, Grayson, do you put anything on your YouTube channel? Uh, I know that you watch mine and and, and, and make mine uh, what it is, but do you put anything on your YouTube channel? The cool thing is, I'm trying to modding him in your end. And, and Neil, I'm in the studio and I'm trying to unmod him and it says it won't let me do it because he's the owner. It says I can't unmoderate the owner or moderate the owner, unmoderate him, whatever. When I go in and click show, it literally comes up, you cannot moderate the video owner. So just another thing that you know we need to work on around here. I don't know if, if those of y'all last week saw, my sister made these. And this is what I got for Christmas. Thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, don't know who this good looking guy on the other side is, but man, she did a great job. Uh, Sabre, if you're in here watching, I appreciate it. Salt and Crackers from Mars, you gotta love that. Cameron Harvey from Texas. We have Dayton, Ohio, DeBerry, Florida, Holland, Michigan. Megan, how are you? Good to have you in here. Ousted, Michigan, Alex Link, good to see you. And Lilith Graham is in Canada. Joe says, I'm 17, want to be a plumber. Where do I start? Start by asking questions in the forum. Uh, that's kind of where we try to get to with questions. Uh, but man, you're in a great spot. Check it out. Watch videos, learn how to get into trades, and you'll find a way to make it happen. Uh, great information, Neil. We got TV Junkie from Toronto. Joe Everest is in Warrensburg. Oh, no. Zeppelin 5000 is in Warrensburg. Permanent Hall, Michigan. Neil says, how much I want one. They're beautiful. Man, I tell you what, Neil, my sister did good on these. This, I mean, the, the number one, it's a double-contained stainless tumbler. She spends about three days making these, and, and I sent her my logo. She did it. It was great. Uh, I've got it full right now, so I can't really turn it up, but it's, well, maybe I can. It, it's got my name, uh, the expert plumber down on the bottom. She just, she went above and beyond. This is probably one of the coolest Christmas presents I've ever got, other than what Julie gives me every year. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Guys, guys I will tell y'all, you know, we love making videos, and we put three videos up a week. What we do is we teach people about the trades. Not just really plumbing, but plumbing's the biggest part of it because I've got 40 years experience in it. But we teach people about the trades. If there's something you want to know about the trades, how to get better at the trades, how to open your own business, whatever it is, those are the kind of things that we normally talk about and make videos about. Cool thing is we are also over on, we've got a subreddit called Roger Wakefield Posts. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. And if you have not seen what we're doing on TikTok, man, you are missing out because our TikTok list has done a great job. We are blowing up over there. We're... Liz, how long ago did we start TikTok? Is it a month, month and a half? How how many days? Do you remember? Um, about a month ago. About a month ago. So about one month ago, we started TikTok. We will hit 80,000 subs here in the next couple of days. It is growing very fast. But we've got 76, 77,000 subs right now, our followers. The cool thing about it is that we've already got over a million likes. That's fantastic. So Liz has done great there. And, man, if y'all want to check it out, do. If you've got any plumbing pictures or videos that you want us to look at for YouTube or, or possibly sharing on YouTube, things like that, do me a favor. If it's your video, go over to Roger Wakefield Posts on Reddit. Post them there. Uh, either myself, Will Grayson, somebody goes in there and, and looks at them, checks them, finds some cool stuff, and then we do everything that we can. So... I hope that you're here tonight to learn something. It is great, and we are having fun with it. So, I know, Neil, w Will's voice has changed a lot. Uh, <laughs> Will, how long have you been working here? Um, around three months now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Will, Will went in for a, a gender 
replacement surgery. Uh, it's working very, very well. Uh, Will actually looks great too, so it's wonderful. Uh, we got Big John in the house. You do it, brother. How are you? Uh, Black Ghost Schwarzgeister's in here. Man, we got some cool people in here today. So tell me this. Yeah, so, Samir Ahmed, that's, that's probably going to get you booted right on out, just so you know. Here's the thing. What are you going to do different this year? What is it that, oh, yeah, this will be easy. Cool. Well, that was quick and easy. I like that. I love it when it goes that easy. Uh, the neat thing is, what's your year like? What are you doing different? And, and I love that because we all need to make changes. 2020 is one of the most unique years we've ever had for, for, for people, for, God, for, for politics, for everything. So many different things. But the cool thing about it is what are you going to do different? What is it you're going to do to literally find out how to make a change? And we study, we grow, we learn. There's so many different things that we do. What is it that you're doing? Now, I'm going to jump over into the forum for a little bit. So, guys, I will tell y'all, if you've got questions that you want to ask, please jump over into the forum. I'm going to be bouncing back and forth from camera to camera. Uh, Liz will bring up any major comments, super chat, stuff like that. It's great to see William, Grayson, Liz, everybody in here. Thank you so much. And... Big John, the Urban Explorer, Sean, Joe Everest. We got some great people in here. Joseph Lalibert says, this year I want to have a positive attitude like Roger Wakefield. Man, I don't know which Roger Wakefield you're talking about, but good luck with that. Uh, so I'm going to jump into the form real quick. Just because I always get some good stuff over here. And we'll start right here. And this question is from Joshua. And Joshua says, says, you look like Doug Domadome. Don't guess I know him. Have you ever considered wearing a large white cowboy hat? Well, you know, the funny thing is, Joshua, I, uh, I, I used to be a redneck. I used to be a roper. I used to wear a straw hat or a black hat almost everywhere I went. I love going country dancing and stuff like that, but I don't know who you're talking about. Next in the forum, I've got Neil. Not Neil C. I've got Neil, and it says, hmm, when's there's a world record? You know, I don't think there's a world record for doing that kind of thing, but, man, just keep it up. Good luck with it. Alex says, what is better to run in the whole house, PEX or PVC? Well, in, in Texas, I'll tell you, you're talking two different systems. In Texas, PEX is what we use for water, PVC for sewer. If you're building a new house, though, depending on where you're located, you're probably looking at PVC for water lines. I like the PEX. I like, I like open or really is what, I, what my favorite is. But the cool thing is, if you're going to use pecs like crimp pecs, make sure you oversize your pipe because the fittings have a reduced flow. They're smaller, have a smaller internal diameter, and man, it's just it's not a, a great thing. So you can literally create flow restriction problems the further you get away from the meter or water heater. So try, try what you can. Oh, I forget, I think what's the most. You know, and, and this is a good thing, and I just saw this in the chat, so I'm going to jump over here real quick. So it says, you're for Sanyo. It says, what is, what is the most or one of the most common plumbing issues that people tend to get it wrong when it comes to fixing it? And it's not really the plumbing issue they get wrong. It, it's the things they don't do. Uh, hello to Scully's House of Thrillers in the house. Good to have you here, man. And that's another channel. If you have not gone over and checked that out and subscribed, you need to. It is cool. There you go. So the neat thing about it is literally people can fix anything. And it's not things that they fix and get wrong. 
normally when there's a plumbing problem, what they do, they forget to turn off the water. And they get into a situation where they, they undo something, they cut something, and all of a sudden there's water everywhere. The problem is at that point, people are trying to clean up the water. They're not trying to fix the problem. At that point, they are literally trying to clean up everything that they can, and, and that's just crazy. So one thing that I tell people to do is make sure that you turn the water off before you start. If you're working on any water line, that way you don't have that problem. Now, when it's time to turn that water back on, you can have somebody else do it while you're talking to them on the phone, or you, you can go do it and tell somebody else, look, you stay under the sink, crack it on slowly, wait and see if somebody starts screaming, but crack it on slowly and let the meter stop spinning. So when you crack it on, it's going to turn until all that extra water comes out. Once it stops, you know everything's good. It's holding pressure. If it doesn't, don't open it all the way. Just hold on and wait and see what happens. Patrick says, what's your opinion of states that don't require any training to be a plumber, electrician, or an HVAC tech? It drives me crazy that there's so many people that don't know what they're doing. And this is good because the state of Texas is fixing to start, we're, as plumbers, we're going to have to start fighting for our plumbing license again. The bad thing about it is it's because of a, a politician, a uh, uh, a representative from Marshall, Texas, that literally thought it would be funny to say, look, we don't need a plumbing license. I'm not going to do a safety net. And, and luckily, Governor Abbott stepped in and said, look, this is an emergency action, so we're, we're going to reinstate the border, keep it active. The funny thing is, man, I don't like states that don't have licensing because I think licensing help protect the people. It's not... You know, a license is not in place to make sure that I have a license so I can charge you whatever I want to do. The license is in place to help protect the health of the nation, the people that, that we're actually out working for. And it does that by making sure that we're trained the right way to make sure crazy things don't happen. And I got to tell you, being a plumber for 40 years, I have seen some crazy stuff out there. So my thought to the states that don't is why don't you care enough about the people of your state? in order to, to make a license required. And I got to tell you, Patrick, I agree with you. It drives me crazy that so many states let them get by with it, but a lot of them do it. And to me, contact your senators, your representatives, and start talking to them and saying, hey, what do we have to do to get a license here? Another good group would be PHCC, maybe even the union in your area uh, to see if that's a possibility. I'm going to jump back over in the form real quick. Make sure I answered that last one. Yes. Look, look, let me touch on this again. Alex, I love Upanor for water. Uh, we, we do PEX. We do copper. We do that. I really like Upanor. And then PVC for, for drain pipe. If you live out in a municipality that allows PVC, uh, it's very possible that, I mean, I've seen older houses or houses out in the country that have PVC water lines. Nothing wrong with it. I just, I prefer Upanor. Next in the form, Eli, what does it take to get into plumbing? And how, we're, how and where do I get training for it? I'm in 10th grade. This job is interesting to me. Well, number one, Eli, welcome. It, it is very interesting. And anybody in the chat that's a plumber, just put it, put in, I'm a plumber. Uh, if you're not in the chat, but you know how to do plumbing, you're a handyman, something like that, put in plumbing. So plumber, if you're licensed, plumber, if you're not. I have a lot of people that, that reach out to me all the time with the same question. And you know, what I'll tell you is, is number one, it's like I said a while ago, you're in a good spot already. You can watch these videos and learn a lot of things that a lot of people don't know. If you want to go to my YouTube channel, not right now, but go to the top right-hand corner. We've got the, the free school, and really it's a mini course. And it just asks you a few questions to kind of figure out what kind of plumber you would like to be. Do you like to build things or fix things? Do you want to work commercial or residential? And there's a lot of different things there, but it'll help you find out what kind of plumber you want to be, and that really can help you a lot. So go do that first. 
keep watching these videos, figure out how to do a lot of these things. And, and I'm telling you, it will make a big difference for you. Nobody's late. All right. Next question in the forum. Guys, like I said, if you've got any questions, please jump over in the forum and ask them in there. Uh, can you post that super chat? Uh, oh, you did? I don't see it. It's coming. I hear it. I heard a click. All right. Next question is from Van. I just installed a tankless water heater. Do I need an expansion tank? Also, I'm going to install a recirculating pump, and I have a water softener system. Will there be a problem? Do I need a check valve, check valve right after the water softener? Uh, you probably want a check valve there. The, the thing that I'm thinking, though, is for a tankless water heater, I don't think that you necessarily need an expansion tank. You've got a, I'm going to call it a temperature or pressure relief valve, TMP valve on it. If it pops off light, I mean, man, I don't know that I've ever put a tankless or a, an expansion tank on a tankless water heater, but I can see where it would be a good idea. So, you know, thinking about it, logistically, it, it's probably a smart thing to do. If you hadn't, I would think about it, but also if you're going to put a expansion tank on, make sure you install it right and you set it properly based on your city pressure. Alex Gearhead says, thank you, Roger, for answering my question. You are more than welcome. You know, the, the cool thing is, guys, look, th this is what we do. We come in, we talk plumbing. There's people in the in the chat that, that actually answer plumbing uh, or, or know a lot about it. So, you know, it, it, man, if you're, if you're wanting to know questions, this is a great place to be. Plumber Payday says, from Northern Virginia, apprentice, soon-to-be journeyman, uh, what was your strategy to get multiple licenses? Also, what characteristics do your top performers have? Plumber Payday, that's really good because, you know, we hire for character. And, and we're actually going through a... a comment or, or going through a process right now looking at a new plumber and we really like the guy and we've got to still go through the process now this is a plumber that i mean i've known I, i've i've been around him i know people that have worked with him and, and i can call people and ask about references the cool thing about it though is look he's a good guy and i think he brings a lot to the team Character wise, he's a good person, but we still have to go through all the processes. But but to me, top performers have the attitude of they want to be a team player, they want to help, they want to contribute, and they always want to do the right thing for the customer. And you give me somebody like that, man, it's phenomenal. Next question over in the forum. Guys, please remember, if you've got questions, go over to the forum with them. And that way we can get, we know we get to all of them. We can go through them in order and, and get them knocked out. Uh, James Clifton, Happy New Year to you, Roger. My question to you is, what would be the most important thing to focus on in a startup plumbing business? Uh, the most important thing to focus on is a list of about 10 of them. <laughs> you, you've got to do things right. Uh, you have to have accounting set up. You've got to have licensing, insurance, accounting and bookkeeping and invoicing. And man, there's a, there's a ton of things, but those are just the easy ones. You've also got to make the phone ring and you've got to make sure that you're making money on every job. The, the funny thing about that, and, and when I say it that way, the, the funny thing about it is I was I was on Clubhouse the other night. If y'all are on Clubhouse already, put it, put a note in here and say, hey, I'm here. Or better than that, find me on Clubhouse and connect with me. Here's the thing. I, I jumped into, and this was the first night that I was actually on Clubhouse. I jump into Clubhouse. I go into this room because it says that Grant Cardone is in there talking about how to make, how to make money. And Grant Cardone's actually got a show coming up on the Discover Channel uh, starting Wednesday night 
They literally drop him off in Pueblo, Colorado with $100, and he's got 90 days to make a million-dollar business or build a million-dollar business. Funny thing about it is he talks about it, and he says, look, these are the three businesses that I would invest in right now. I would either invest in real estate, invest in social media, or invest in a personal business. And man, it is just so smart to look at it. But one of the things he says is, he says, look, I've got rules. Rule number one is this business cannot lose money. Meaning whatever you're going to invest in, it has to make money. And that's something that if we all took on as business owners, man, that, that is huge. So that is one thing to focus on is in the very beginning, learn to track every vehicle, even if it's yours, as a revenue source. Is it making money? And, you know, normally when you get to a bigger size company, you find out your, your top couple of plumbers are making most of your money and the other ones are either not making money or costing you money. And you've got to figure it out and make changes. And yes, saltine cracker, I am parched. So we have all the water here for. All right, next question in the forum. Guys, if y'all have got questions, please jump over to the forum. That's where we're going to be asking them. Garbage Trucks of Manitoba says, do you like Kohler toilets better than Toto or American Standard? And my thing is, and this is really a good one for me because I, I'm not that guy. Some people are like, look, I only like this brand. I like nothing else. I can tell you great things about Kohler, Toto, American Standard. I've actually got one of each one of them back here. We're going to be installing and installing bidet toilet seats on them and, and checking all three of them and, and comparing the install and, and just look at them. And look, I have nothing against any one of them. Uh, I think Kohler makes an amazing product. I, I love it. But I can tell you the same thing about Toto and American Standard both. I've got, uh, I've actually got a, a Toto, American Standard, and a Niagara in my house right now. And if you aren't familiar with Niagara toilets, that's one of the first toilets that I knew of that, that was like a, a, a UH, a ultra, ultra high conservation. I literally believe that, man, it, as plumbers, Every toilet we install should be focused on water conservation. Every time, every time we install a shower head, anything at all like that, there's things that we got to look at and say, what can we do to make this better? And as plumbers, that's the best way that we can do it. Uh, Emily Garcia says, just here to say that I replaced the whole thing in the back of the toilet all by myself without asking my dad because I watch your channel. I'm a 20-something girl who had... No clue. Number one, Emily, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And congratulations for rebuilding your toilet. I love that. That's why I do what I do. Roland Cruz has any tips? A homeowner, what tools will be must-haves? Doing, doing all plumbing for an accessory dwelling unit, apartment on my property. Y yeah, you're going you're gonna to want... You're going to want like a sawzall. You're going to want a drill, a cordless drill. You're going to want, you know, a pop wrench, cutters, uh, just all kinds of different things. But it, and it's funny too because people always ask me on power tools if they're like, do you use Milwaukee? Do you use Rigid? Do you use DeWalt? And my answer is yes. I, I like all three of them. I literally think that they all have great tools and I, I don't know that and I'm just, I'm not one of these people. I don't bleed yellow, uh, but I have nothing against the wall. I, I've, I've never been one of those guys. Hey, if it's not a Milwaukee or if it's not a rigid, I'm not going to use it. I believe that they all make really good tools. I think that everybody's tools are built for a different thing or, or has a different cool thing about it. And, and you've got to look at what's best for you. But for, for tools around the house, if you're plumbing, channel locks, uh, saws, uh, tape measure, man, that's a big one. 
I've been plumbing 40 years. I've got a million tape measures, but when I'm around the house and I look for one, I'm tell you right now, I can't ever find one. So it's kind of funny, but it, it, it is what it is. And we have Mr. Am Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe Shoma is in here. How are you doing? And then right below that, we have Ember Mendoza. Welcome. Good to have you in here. Another moderator. And Happy New Year to you. 2021 is going to be phenomenal. Salting cracker, most areas require a license for a building you don't live full-time in. Absolutely. But the rule in Texas is if it is not your homestead, you are not allowed to work on it without being a plumber. We have a super chat there from Van Tran. Thank you for the answer. Love your videos. Van, th thank you. I appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, guys, the cool thing is, look, we love what we do. Whether it is <clears throat> whether it is making videos, whether it's doing research for content, trying out new tools. I know y'all can't see it, but and I've got tools all around me down here. Uh, and this is research that we're doing for Ferguson. And I got to tell you, it man, we just I love what we get to do. We get to help people learn about plumbing, about tools, about stuff like that, and it really does make a big difference. Next in the forum, we have Schwarzgeister. How are we doing? What is the biggest mistake an apprentice did under you? You know, probably, <laughs> uh, funny thing is, probably laying out a floor from the wrong column. It was on a commercial job. We, we were making marks on the floor for the core driller. Got up there and laid everything out and had gone down on the floor below to work on the popping system. Core driller comes out and all of a sudden a, a, a core drops in a spot that it shouldn't have dropped. And I'm like, okay, wait, what just happened? And I start looking around. It's like, okay, let me check the drawings. Did, did it offset? Did, what happened? Turns out the apprentice measured it from the wrong column. And man, he was good. Uh, actually, he was really good. He was getting ready to become a journeyman, but uh, I trusted him and let him do it, and that was my bad, and I took the blame for it. Uh, I, I didn't throw him under the bus or anything because at the end of the day, look, man, he, he works under me, so it is my responsibility. Let me see here next in the chat. I'm sorry, next in the forum. Sorry, guys. Sanjo says... What type of plumbing industry makes the most money? Okay, now this is going to be fun because everybody would think that a commercial plumber probably makes more money because he's doing bigger jobs. And I've been a superintendent on big commercial jobs. I've been a quality control manager. I've been director of operations for a large mechanical contractor. And I got to tell you, I pay plumbers more money than I made. And that's a funny way to put it, but it's true. I've got plumbers that work for me now that make more money than I made as director of operations for a large mechanical contractor in the union. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, it, it, it was a company that, you know, I, pr I probably could have made more money at and should have made more money at, but I went to them for a year to help them out, and it just it, it didn't work. But whenever I walked out, that's when I decided to open my own company, and it's been great. Next over here in the forum. Oh, let me go back to this. Sanjo, you can make as much money as you want to make doing anything. Meaning, if you get your plumbing license, you can open a commercial, you can open residential. As a residential service plumber, you can make great money. As a commercial plumber working for other people, you're kind of set by how many hours they let you work, things like that. Now, you can make more money is that it's literally, did they bid any overtime in the job? Does it have to be done by a certain date? There's a lot of different things that can affect that. But most big companies don't bid jobs with a lot of overtime in it. 
they bid it trying to get it. And if you bid a lot of overtime, normally you're not going to get it. So the big thing is, as a residential service plumber, somebody needs somebody to come out on Saturdays. Somebody needs people in the middle of the night. There's a lot of different things and a lot of different reasons to make it work. And at the end of the day, it can all be done. I just want to make sure that my phone is on do not disturb. Okay, good. I don't know why I just looked down and thought about that. I thought, man, I don't want it to start ringing. Uh, if you're trying to figure out how to get into plumbing or, or what kind of plumbing you want to get into, Sanjo, what I would do is I would go take my free mini course. If you go into my YouTube channel, it's in the top right corner. Click on that, and it's going to ask you what kind of plumber you want to be. And that really is going to help you a lot. It, it, at least it's something I wish I would have known before I got into plumbing because I've done all of it now. I've done residential and commercial. I've done service and new construction. I've done so many different things. But the cool thing about it is I wish I'd have known that in the beginning. I might have done it different. I'm glad it turned out the way that it did where I've got the experience doing all of it but it may have turned out different. Amtrak says, what happens when your toilet water rises? Well, if, if, it, if it goes down after it rises, it's not a bad thing. The, the bowls, normally when you flush it, it fills with water. That creates the cyclonic action, and, and then that flushes the toilet. If it's not doing all that and it's just rising, uh, that means there's a stoppage or a blockage or something like that, and see what we can do because it's going to have to be addressed. Next in the forum, Aaron Araya says, for curiosity, what was the most or one of the most common plumbing issues? Okay, I think that we've already addressed that. But the biggest issue is not turning the water off. Matthew Ray McDonough, how are you? HVAC technician. <clears throat> My sister-in-law, okay, Roger, my sister-in-law, Maine, has no flow coming from the house. Should I have a camera run down the line or have her replace her pipes? I, I would always run a camera, and, and it's funny because I know a lot of plumbers that, that literally they want to just come in and replace things. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of times that needs to happen, but my thing, sorry, I'm anal retentive. i got to get all my stuff, OCD, I guess. Uh, my thing is I would want to run a camera because I want to see, is there anything messed up that I really need to work on, that I really need to fix? And it, it's kind of hard for me to come in and just tell somebody, hey, look, you need a whole house repipe unless I can prove it. And I, I want to make sure that I can prove it. I want to look at it. I want to figure it out. I want to see what I can do to, to show them, hey, this is why. Because a, a repop is not cheap, and it, it's really bad if I come in and, and try to sell somebody something they don't need. We made a video here a while back, and it, it's strange because when, when we got the call, and, and Amber, if she's still in here, she, she's the one who took it. Literally, we got a call, and it says, hey, we've had two different companies come out. One company said all the lines are rotten and need to be replaced. The other plumber came out and tested it and says, look, there's nothing wrong. So it really concerned her and blew her mind. So she called us and says, look, I don't know what to do. Well, Amber talked to me and I said, look, I'll, I'll go out and do it. I, I want to test it and see. Problem was there were no leaks, except the plumber who came and said there were no leaks installed two-way cleanouts, and it leaked up at the top. So... The, the female adapter that he glued on had, had a leak at that joint. So, you know, the thing is, I don't want to sell anybody something they don't need. Now, and I had this great conversation today. If, if I test 30 feet into the house and that 30 feet is rotten, I may tell them, hey, look, we need to replace the rest of it because if this 30 feet's bad, the rest may not be now, but we're going to dig up this 30 feet again to get to it to fix it all. So I love that to be able to give them options and go from there. Chris says, I have an electric Ale Smith water heater that doesn't get as warm as normal and keeps tripping the heater element reset button. What could be wrong with it? Uh, Chris, I would rebuild all the electronics on it. I'd replace the reset buttons, 
the thermostats, the elements, I would replace everything in there. And it's an A.O. Smith. If you go to ferguson.com, they'll have all the parts. You can probably order them right there. Uh, but yeah, I'd, you're, and if it's your elements, you're either going to have to swap them out quick and know what you're doing or shut it off, drain it down, turn off the power before you shut it off. Don't turn on the power till after you fill it back up. But yeah, that's what it's going to take in order to get it working right. But you also may look at how much is it going to cost you to do all that? Would it be smarter, depending on how old the water heater is, would it be smarter just to invest that money towards a new one? Okay, Matthew got you taken care of there. Nick Kurdzuk says, do you have to be working for a union contractor to be in a union training apprentice program? Uh, yes, you do. If, and here's why, literally you go to work through the union, the union sends you out to contractors and, and it's called, you know, when, when they call for help. So if they put in a job call and say, hey, I need 10 plumbers and, and four apprentices, the union looks at their out of work list and that's where they get people from. So yes, you've got to be a member of the union to be on that list to actually get called out onto those jobs. <clears throat> I like the not but if you're enjoying the stream, don't forget to like it and share it with a friend. Just go down there in the bottom, click share and, and put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it on Instagram, put it on LinkedIn, put it on your Facebook page or on your, your, uh, your YouTube page, share it out. And how many people are in your list? Can you tell? 100. Love it. Next question in the forum, Osses Williams says, after I graduate high school this year, I might have an apprenticeship in Arizona during the summer. Kind of nervous. Do you have any tips? Uh, number one, you're in the right spot. Get in here and watch these videos and learn so that when you go to work for them, man, you're not just completely green. You know exactly what's going on. Uh, you understand it. You can literally get in there, make things better by helping people. You know what they're talking about. So that's what I would say. Watch as many of these videos as you can. Learn as much as you can. Uh, learn how to use a tape measure. Learn how to use power tools. Learn how to do and use anything you can. And, and I'm telling you, it'll help you. It'll help them. And they will definitely want you to come back. And that's what it's all about. So you asked a question again, what type of plumber industry makes the most money? We already did that one. Edwin says, do you recommend CSST or black iron pipe? I, I'm an old school plumber, so I love black iron pipe. Uh, I also love the fact that we have the rigid with the mega press. We have the rigid pro press with the mega press jaws. We can actually go in and use that to cut like a T right in the middle of a line. So there's so many good things that I like about black iron. CSST I don't like because of the bonding and, and not sure of this, not sure of that. There's been a lot of lawsuits. And I think actually CSST is illegal in California right now. If you're out in California or anywhere else, please let me know is CSST legal where you're at. James Peace, what do you think the cost of a full replumbing of a trailer? I currently live in one in Texas that apparently had its plumbing installed completely incorrect. We got quoted 3K. Does that sound right? Uh, James, that's kind of hard to tell you because I've been under trailers that had the piping all the way down in the dirt where it's buried. I have been under trailers where it's all hung right under the trailer. Uh, Three sounds maybe just a little high, but it depends. Are they going to have to pull toilets? Are they going to have to get up in the walls? Are they going to have to do anything at all like that? Because, I mean, I can see where it could get up to more, but I can also understand the way you're looking at it. Hey, 3K is kind of high because normally there's just like two bathrooms, a kitchen, a laundry room. It's all right there and accessible. 
my question is, I'd be curious as to what all was piped wrong, how much of it can you keep, and will that help you out any? Jeremy says, weird question. When the toilet gets backed up, why does it come out of the bathtub? Is that an issue? And also, what's the white cap in my backyard? Something with pressure. The white cap in your backyard should probably be a clean out. Uh, it may be threaded. It may be a plug. It may be a different thing, but, but it should be a clean out. What I would tell you is, though, the reason water comes up in the tub, when you flush a toilet, the water goes down the drain under it, and it turns, and it goes into a sanitary tea. Where that sanitary tea is, there's normally a side inlet that goes over and has a P-trap that catches the tub. So the funny thing about it, let's see something here. I just tried making Grayson an editor. I mean, a, a moderator. See if that helps, Grayson. Uh, don't know if it will. Anyway, so my thing is, Jeremy, that tub drain's tied into the toilet. And if it stopped up down below that, say it stopped up in the, the sand tee, right as it starts turning back down, if it stopped up there, when you flush that toilet, that water has nowhere to go. So it's going to go over to the tub and, and cause a problem there. I love you too. Don't know how to say your name, but man. And you're right. Saltine cracker, they are vented with the va vanity normally. Plumber Payday. Happy New Year on the Dig Crew Apprentice Plumbing, two years to become a journeyman. What was your strategy for multiple licenses? You know, I, I like this because. The, the fun thing about it is I love plumbing and, and I love studying it. So the first license that I got, when I, when I still had my journeyman license, I got my journeyman med gas. I joined the union. I wanted to get my med gas endorsement to work on hospitals. Well, then once I got my master license, it's like, well, man, I got my master license. I need to go in and, and get my master med gas now. Then after I did that, I did the WSPS. I did the multi-residential fire protection system. And... While I was at one of the largest or one of the larger mechanical contractors I was at, we were doing some big jobs and I wanted to become a lead AP and they actually kept telling me no. Uh, I mean, I literally walked into one of the vice president's office and he just said, no, look, it's, it's not, it's not a test. that's going to be easy. It's expensive. But the big thing about it is, is he said, look, Roger, he said, I've got engineers that can't pass that test, and that test is designed for architects and engineers. I eventually talked him into letting me taking it, and whenever I got my study guide, it freaked me out because I did not understand any of it. So what I, what I ended up doing, I ended up rescheduling the test I had scheduled. I scheduled it for like the, the weekend after Memorial Day, like that Tuesday, I took off that Friday. So literally Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I stayed home and studied. <clears throat> and it freaked me out because Monday night, I found a test online that was like, hey, look, this is the closest to the real exam you'll ever find. All the other sample tests I had taken, I'd made a 70 or 80 on. When I took it that night, the, the closest one to real, I made a 40. And I mean, I thought I was going to throw up. It was nine o'clock at night. I've got to be at the testing center at eight the next morning. And I mean, literally, I printed up that test. I went through and marked everything what it should be and then compared it to what it was. Then I went through all my notes to figure it out. So getting multiple licenses is hard. The cool thing about it, though, at the end of the day, it is so worth it. I love the fact that I'm a lead AP, but also that I have all the endorsements in Texas that, that really is a big deal to me. Uh, Israel says, how do you keep the grease trap clean? Uh, be careful of what all you put down in it. And every now and then you're going to have to call a company to come out and pump it out. And, and that's what it takes. There are some chemicals. We've used Bio One, Bio Clean. We've used all kinds of different things for stuff like that. And that can actually help. 
uh, with the fog, the fats, oil, and gas. So I would definitely look at that, look at an opportunity of something. Plumber Payday, I, I hope that that helped you out. <clears throat> uh, Carter Plaisance says, why do upstairs toilets clog so easy? Uh, and to be honest, an upstairs toilet shouldn't. Uh, to be honest, once you flush it and it turns horizontal and then comes across and then drops down vertical again, it shouldn't clog because, man, it's a straight drop normally, 10 or 12 feet. Now, if they've had to offset it and maybe it turns and it goes flat for a long ways where the, the water's not enough to push the solids, that can happen. It just, man, it really it depends on how it's, how it's plugged or how it's ran because it can cause it to plug up. Uh, James Tony says, how to start a plumbing business, right? Is it worth it? It, it can be if you do it right. Uh, but guys, I'm going to tell you, like, if y'all got questions, please put them in the forum, not the chat. I kind of jump in the chat every now and then. Uh, if you've got questions like this, please put, put them in the chat so that I know that we get to all of them. Uh, because there's a lot of them here that I, I let me correct this, put them in the forum, not the chat. Uh, Chat, man, I love seeing what y'all are doing, how y'all are doing it, and seeing the different things. You know, Will's talk, or Neil's talking about uh, camper van life. I'll tell you what, man, the stuff he does on his videos is phenomenal. So jump over there, check that stuff out. Uh, but James, Tony, man, you're in the right spot. This is a great place to learn how to start your own company. We talk about the things we did, how to make the phone ring, the training we got, the advanced training we've got. I've got coaches, consultants. I saw somebody post something in here earlier about Michael Gerber. You know, we hired Michael Gerber to be our coach, uh, to be my coach back when we first started our company. And it, it helped a lot. Problem was Michael Gerber taught me what to do. I needed somebody that could teach me how to do it. And man, we had a lot to learn, but once we learned it, we started improving. And I mean, some of that now we teach, some of it we, we refer other people to. Uh, but, man, I'll tell you what, you got to keep learning. You can't just walk out tomorrow and start a company and think everything is going to go perfect. Normally it doesn't, and, and it's been tough on us. Phil Hall says, do you prefer tankless water heaters over the traditional 40 or 50? Talked with a plumber and was told they fail a lot. What's your thoughts? The good thing about it is, that you, we have options nowadays. I like the tankless water heater if it if it's a relatively easy install, meaning there's a big enough gas line. It's easy to get the vent out the roof. Uh, all kinds of different things. The funny thing is, I, I, look, I'm, I'm a plumber. I own a plumbing company. We looked at my, my house. It was not feasible for me to put in a tankless, and I wanted to. Now, I could have relocated it and ran some pipe along my walls in the garage. There's a lot of things I could have done, but I did not want to repipe my house just to put a tankless in. I would love to have a tankless. Know that I've got unlimited hot water. It's not running during the day. There's a lot of benefits about it. But my thing, the, the big thing that I looked at was it's not worth it for me. And I can get it done at cost. I still didn't want to do it that way. So we decided not to. What I like is normally when we go into a house, we tell people, look, what you have here is the best thing to go back with because it's engineered that way. But there is a possibility we can look at it, change it, and make it better. Just it doesn't always happen that way. Patrick says, what brands do you use for tank top water heaters and also tankless? That, that's a good question because there's a lot of different brands out there. Being a residential service company, we work on all of them. If if the urban explorer calls and he says, hey, look, I live in your area. I've got a rainwater heater, an A.O. Smith, a Bradford White, whatever it is, we can go work on that. When we install water heaters, we normally install Bradford White because they're American-made. They're easy to get parts for. There's a lot of good things about them, a lot of things about them I really like. So... The, the cool thing is that it, it, it's so easy 
to just say, look, we'll, we'll install whatever everybody wants. But I've done research on Bradford White. I've gone up to Grand Rapids. I've toured their plant. I've toured their manufacturer's facility. I've actually reached out to them and asked them, can I come up and video how water heaters are made, how y'all do your training? Uh, iTech, their training center is phenomenal. So Patrick, there, there, there's a lot of cool things that I like about Bradford White, but it's not just the water heater, it's the people. And, and when, you, when you walk into a company and you can see they do things for a reason, it, it makes all the difference in the world. Chris Mann says, I'm a mechanic and wondering what you think about the metric and American sizes for tools. You know, the, the good thing I'll say is, is most, well, most name brand plumbing is, is in, uh, uh, Imperial. Here's what I'll tell you is I, I understand metric enough because I had to use it for working in the industrial arena, meaning a lot of these pipes were strictly metric. Uh, so, so, you know, 22 millimeter, 35 millimeter, wh whatever sizes they were. <sighs> You know, my, my thing is, if we want to go metric, just go metric, but don't halfway do it like we did in 75. When I was in the fifth grade, 75, they literally they were like, look, this is going to be the future, and they teach you how to convert it and how to do this, how to do that. My thing is, look, if you want to do it, you know, throw all the, the tape measures and rulers and everything away and say, hey, this is the system now. This is what we use. Figure it out. And if you force it upon people, they will – make it happen. Uh, but just to kind of say, well, we're going to, we're going to take the next 40 years to, to try to implement this and show you what it could be. Yeah. It, it'll never work that way. It doesn't matter to me at all though. I do like those tape measures that have both though, cause I can look down at it and it's like, okay, I, I know what this is. <clears throat> Chris Urban says, I've been, I have an electric A.O. Smith water heater. Man, why are these coming in twice? Sean says, dope before tape or tape before dope when running gas pipe. I literally, I put Teflon tape on, then I put pipe dope on it, and I don't have leaks. Now, I know a lot of, Plumbers that say use one or the other. I actually saw a plumber the other day that did pop dope, then Teflon tape, then pop dope. So, man, we're all taught different. I was taught by an engineer, and it, it really helped me out a lot. See this in, in, in the chat, and I just want to comment on it. So it says, if you have a poly B pipes, should they be replaced immediately? I, I'm not going to say they have to be replaced, but I will say this. They get brittle, they crack, they cause leaks. We don't repair them because of the fact that, man, when we go in to repair it, chances are we can, we can make it cause a leak somewhere else. We don't want to get caught in that game of trying to fix every leak that, that happens. So I just tell people, look, that whole yard line needs to be replaced. If they want to do a shark bite repair, we tell them we don't do it. And some people do. Hebo Plays says, just wanted to say that I started watching your video two or three years ago. That got me inspired to leave the IT industry, and now I only have two months left until my apprenticeship as a plumber. You know, that is fantastic. Uh, jump over in the chatter form or whatever and tell us where you're located and what kind of plumbing you've been doing. Is it commercial? Is it residential? Is it service? Is it new construction? Or are you in the union? Uh, really interested to see how you got in, how you've done well, and, and, and what all that's done for you. So I love that. Thank you so much. Next in the forum, Preston says, did you hear about someone broke into our local police station and stole the toilet? Right now the cops have nothing to go on. Ha ha ha, that's so funny. Oh, it is, that's cute. Uh, and see, I, lo I love plumbing jokes, so, so that really is good. Uh, and yes, this is a real smile. I uh, hope this made you laugh. Keep up the great work. Preston, thank you. That, that's actually pretty good. Dennis Ruiz says, 
you know, Dennis, if you want to do something like that, yeah, do what you want to do. I hope you get to clean it up too. Next, Mackenzie. Yeah, is plumbing anything like porn? You call the plumber and you say, I don't have any money. Yeah, pr probably not. Uh, you know, if, if you don't have any money, chances are the plumber's not going to come anyway. Uh, can't read your name? Can't Oh, and I can't read that question either. Okay, if you wrote it is in Israeli or whatever it is, it, it didn't translate, so I can't read that. It's from Khalid, though. Khalid, I, I wish I could answer it, uh, but I literally cannot read the question. It, it came up untranslated. Cole. What's a common cause of a leak around the toilet base? It, it can be some different things. It can be a bad flange. It could be broken or, or rotted out toilet bolts. It could be that it's backed up so many times and people have used plungers, have used a plunger that it's pushed the bowl wax out. So there's a lot of problems that it could be. What, what I'll tell you is that these are all really pretty easy ones to fix as long as the flange isn't broken. If the flange is good, then you can literally take out the old bolts, pull it out, change them out, put a new bowl wax in, clean it, clean everything up first, put a bowl wax in, and, man, reset the toilet. It'll be nice and sturdy. Uh, I normally caulk around three sides. I try not to caulk around the back because if anything ever happens like that in the future and it's going to leak, I want it to leak right there on the floor where I see it, not – down under the subfloor where it's going to cause problems. All right, all right. Next question is from James Peace again. So just moved to Texas to be with your family, live in a mobile home, continuous problems. Uh, a video about it, uh, talk about it, yada, yada, yada. James, tell me this. What part of Texas are you in? Uh, Texas is kind of big. I don't know if y'all been here before, but, man, uh, you can't ever say yes to something like this because, you know, the, you may say, I'm in Texas. Can you come look at this? Well, some parts of Texas are, you know, four, five, six hundred miles away. So anything's possible, but no guarantees. Guys, remember, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to talk about, please go over into the forum, fill it out, and I will do everything I can to help you. Roblox says, how do rats come out of the toilet? Well, it's really easy. Rats can get down in the sewer. Uh, actually, man, I've got a real good friend, a plumber, that found a possum, and he went out, and literally, and they, I don't know if they heard it or what, but he opened up the two-way clean house and you could see it right there. Now, he found a way to get this possum out. So I, I got to tell you, it uh, anything can get in the sewer. Remember, they're looking for water. And say you ever go to a house and there's no clean-out covers, but there's, there's things like that missing, uh, it's real easy for for. Uh, got a rat or anything to get down in that hole and get stuck. Well, if they get down in there, now they want out. So they can literally go and climb up in the plumbing. And, and the plumbing, I mean, there's water in it, but they get wet. So all they've got to do is climb through it. It's really not that hard. Next question is from Max. Has installed a single-handle bath valve with the cartridge removed. Had a plug in and pressurized. Noticed Hot water in the house was only lukewarm. I learned there was a mixing valve inside. Valve body and bath. Is that odd? No. Uh, if you put up a, a one-handle valve on it and there's a plug or anything like that, that's going to cross the water. That That's going to mix your hot and cold water, so you're never going to get hot, hot water. Uh, I got a call out on a problem. Uh, a customer had a tankless water here, and I'm like, look, we only get warm water in certain areas. Well, back by this one bathroom, they were actually remodeling. They had the cartridge pulled out, had a plug in it so they could do a pressure test. Exact same thing. It didn't matter if you were running hot or cold, the water was crossing through that valve. And 
once I turned it on and walked over there and found out, and this was one of the first electric tanklesses that I ever worked on. So it was really interesting. Uh, they had actually a curtain up over the shower. So you really couldn't tell that it was being remodeled. I just, one day I was, man, I was looking around and slid that back and I was like, man, that is the problem I've been looking for. Salt and cracker, lots of ice cold water. Helps keeps the, the parchness away. Next question over in the forum, Michael Novak says, planning to replace the P-trap on your sink because of a small crack. Do I need to buy some specialized tools other than regular home tools? Uh, it depends on how it's installed. You say a small crack, is it plastic or is it copper? And, and if it's chrome, that means it's brass or copper that's polished, coated, treated. The, the thing I'll tell you is, it, it really it depends on how it's installed. If it's installed with slip joint nuts, you're going to need a pair of pliers, and that'll be chrome or PVC. So there's a lot of different ways that it could be. You may need some tools. Uh, then again, I, I've gone to some houses that literally I could change it all with my hand. So different ways to, to do it and look at it, but the opportunity, man, take a picture of it and go post it on our subreddit and – if you'll take pictures at it where we can see the installation real good, and you'll, you'll probably get a lot of people tell you before I can even get there. Let me just did that. Boom. Did that one. Man, I don't know why almost all the questions are coming up double. Paul says, I'm a mathematician, but plumbing is looking more and more like a viable career option. Is there any use for my skills in a plumbing business? Absolutely. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like you're just going to sit around in the office all day and do math. But to the right company, a project manager looks at numbers all day long for estimates, for, for bids, for pricing, for, for anything and everything. To be able to look at a blueprint and take off a drawing, uh, man, numbers are big. In plumbing. Now, I can also turn it around and say, hey, look, there's a way to really never have to do math. Uh, meaning most residential plumbers, it, it's learn how to read a tape measure, stuff like that. There's nothing crazy in there, but you, know, you can still, and, and I tell people, it doesn't matter if you want to work on computers or what you want to do for a living. In plumbing, you can find a way to do it. My son is an estimator for a large mechanical contractor. He deals with numbers all the time. You, you've got to do takeoffs. You've got to do pricing. You've got to do bid sheets. You've got to look at drawings. You've, you've got to do so many things. But, and if you're a mathematician, your, your focus to detail is huge, and, and that could make it a really great thing for you. Kyle Woodland says, how long have you been an experienced plumber? Kyle, I started plumbing in 1980, and that's a long, long way. <laughs> Julie says, I'm her sugar daddy. I love that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not into you at all, Neil. Uh, yeah, me neither, but that's pretty funny. You know, the, the cool thing about it is, Kyle, and, and I tell people this all the time, there are so many opportunities in the plumbing trade that you may never have to get dirty. Project managers make great money, and, and it's a good living. If you got into plumbing and learned how to do plumbing and then became a project manager, it's going to help you even more because you're going to be able to communicate with the field. You're going to be able to communicate with the superintendents, with the, the foreman, with the tradesmen. You're going to be able to communicate with everybody, but then you're also, you're going to be able to come into the office and talk numbers with the owners, with the, the president, with the, the CFO. You're going to be a valuable person. So look that. Go through plumbing and learn how to do it and then understand, look, I'm good at numbers. I'm good at math. Uh, I'm good with computers. I want to move up. There's always an opportunity if you're willing to learn how to do different things. And I think that that people that are, that, that people that literally say, hey, look, I'm good with computers, but I love plumbing. I'm going to learn plumbing and then I'm going to do this. It, it, it can really be a big deal. 
Papa Potato FB, Papa Potato Facebook channel, I'm assuming. Looking at moving to Texas, I'm a journeyman in Colorado. Do I need to get a Texas license before getting hired? Uh, man, I would. I would literally contact the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners today. They're open for about another hour and, and talk to them and say, hey, look, what is it that, that I've got to do in order to get my license? Meaning Texas has reciprocity with a lot of states and, man, it works. Uh, find out how your license, is, uh, Neil, I know it. It is what it is, man. I, I liked you last year, just not this year. Uh, you know, it's good to have people in here you can have fun with. The, the, the neat thing about it, though, is you, you can literally contact the Texas State Board, let them know what license you have. They can look at it and figure out what they can do to help you get in. But Texas is looking for plumbers. Uh, so the one thing I'll ask you at Papa Potato is what part of Texas are you wanting to move for or move to? Uh, and what kind of plumber are you? Are you residential service? Are you commercial? What is it you are? What is it you want to do? That can make all the difference in the world. Back in the forum, Isaac says, what heats water more effectively, a gas or electric water heater? Probably more effectively would be gas, uh, and it may just be m more efficiently. Uh, they both heat it well. I just I think the the recovery rate on on gas water heaters is faster. It I think gas is going to cost you less money. So there's a, a lot of different things about it, but I think that that is probably the more efficient, more effective way. I hope that helps. James says, I got an answer from Miss Wakefield. I'm in Colleen, so I'm sure we're pretty far from you, and you are. Uh, but would you have any plumbers in the area you know? Uh, I know I could trust anyone you recommend. I've been a fan for a while now. By the way, your videos are amazing, and thanks for taking the time to answer. Uh, okay, so James, if, you, if you're going to tell me my videos are amazing, you got to tell me I'm amazing, because if Grayson hears that, he's going to ask for more money. So, you know, be careful who you, how you word that. Uh, and I'm joking. Uh, my videos are great because of the team that we have. Uh, I will reach out tomorrow and see. I'm connected with plumbing, electrical, HVAC, and roofing companies across the United States. I will reach out tomorrow and see who I can get down in that area that I can recommend you to. Uh, I've got one down in Northeast Austin. But I'm thinking claims probably going to be a little bit too far for him to swing up to also. Oh, Neil, my brother. Luke, or I'm sorry, Ludek. What was the absolute worst leak you ever had to deal with? Also, did you ever just nope out of a job when you saw the damage? Um... Literally, the, the worst leak I've ever had to deal with was a, a med gas leak. We, I was doing Medical City Hospital here in Dallas. We were trying to test a job to get a final test on it and literally could not find a leak. And they make a product. It's an ultrasonic leak detector. And I got a hold of it and was able to find this leak on a eight-story hospital in about 30 minutes. So I love the ultrasonic leak detectors. It was actually in a sleeve uh, going through a wall, and it was actually just a pinhole and a pipe, so we would have never thought to look there. But the ultrasonic leak detector heard it, and it was great. Did you ever have one you just saw said, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> When, when I was a resident, when I first started as a residential service plumber, so this was back in the 80s, uh, I literally went to a job, and I say 80s, God, this was probably 84, 85, because it was, it was one of the first service jobs I had. Uh, I went to a housing project, which was like, uh, almost like a, God, almost like a dorm or barracks where, I mean, you walk through the hall and all the doors are open. You're looking in people's living rooms. They're just sitting there watching TV. 
And I got to the one where it was, and as soon as I got in front of the door, I knew it was it because the smell. And they had a stopped up toilet, and I walked in, and they're just like, hey, it's back there. They didn't want to talk. They didn't want to show me. I walked in back there, and that toilet looked like it had been used for six months and never flushed. It was overflowing. It was full. There were flies. There was everything in the world. And I turned around and walked right back out, went out to my company truck and called the office and said, hey, y'all need to get somebody over here to take care of this. And they said, well, you're the one there. You're going to do it. And I'm like, oh, no, I ain't. And they said, well, you don't have a choice. I said, look, I'm a grown man. I got lots of choices. This is one I'm going to make. So that's probably my last day there, but I, I did not do that job. YCL Ashenator says, just started watching your videos yesterday, and I love them. Good. I ask that you only tell 4,000 of your closest friends. Uh, matter of fact, everybody in here, if you'll tell 4,000 of your closest friends about how our YouTube videos have affected your life, how they made you laugh, how you've enjoyed them, whatever it is, it would be greatly appreciated from this end. <clears throat> Ryan says, do you use Service Titan or any software for your business? Ryan, we actually do. Uh, I've looked at Service Titan. I think Service Titan is a great product. Uh, it, it's probably more money than we wanted to spend right now. We are using Service Line. We're just getting started with it. We, we've looked at a, a lot of different products. Service Line is one that we think is going to be really good. And, and that's the, pro, the product that we're going to. I've been using Invoice ASAP which has been great for me as a startup company. And I call that over the last five years. We've got away from it for a couple of times to try the things, and we always come back to it. I love it. It's been easy to use. It's been good to use, and it's been great for us all the way through. So, man, it's just Service Titan is good. Service Titan is wonderful. You just got to look at it and say, you know, what can we do to make this thing work? Uh, and, and learn the system, learn how to use it, and get really good at it. Uh, Mustard Tiger says, hey, man, just wondering if you could recommend a specific angle drill for me to buy for use of drilling holes up to two-inch pipe in tight spaces. You know what? It's funny. This is one that, man, we, we got in here the other day, and I got to tell you, I am ready to, to take it out here and play with it. This son of a gun is heavy duty. This is the DeWalt 60 volt. Oh man, I spilled my water cup. See, I knew I'd do something stupid like that. Uh, anyway, this is the DeWalt 60 volt. And I got to tell you, uh, just pulling this big bad boy out, this has got some power to it. We, man, we've, we've messed with it. We've played with it. Uh, and this thing is so powerful. Man, I love it. It's a... Uh, it's compact enough that you can get into a good area. You look at how close it is to the end here. You've got room to work it. So anyway, that's one that we have, have looked at and played with and can't wait to play with some more. Liz, can you get me some paper towels, please? Uh, so th that's one that, man, I've had fun with it. So Mustard Tiger, I hope that helps you out. And that's the DeWalt 60 volt. And that, that puppy's a beast. I got to tell you, it is a beast. Okay, back into the forum. Adam Hicks says, hey, Roger, are you hiring? Uh, you know what, Adam, here's the thing. We're, we're always hiring. We're always looking for great plumbers. And, and, and it may be a fun, funny way to put it, but... To, uh, to get in here and, you know, one thing that we learned whenever we started getting into the right trade associations that, that helped us grow, help us get better, the things that we started looking at and studying and, and whatnot is a good plumbing company is always hiring because you always have the opportunity to improve the quality of plumber or bring more in, and if you can bring more in, you can actually turn up your marketing a little bit, get a little bit busier, get a few more calls coming in, 
and find a way to keep people busy. And we're going to be making a video here pretty soon. I've got a new marketing company out of Connecticut. And I got to tell you, I've never had a marketing company do what this guy does. And it, it's not just the way he does it. it it's the, the questions he asks, the research that he does. And it did not take us long. I mean, if y'all think about it, I'm in Dallas, Texas. And the neat thing about it is if you Google Dallas, Texas plumbing, plumbing Dallas, Texas, we come up on page one really, really quick. And it is because if, if y'all have not looked at our website, go check it out. Uh, the things that this marketing company has done for me is fantastic. And we're actually going to be making a video on how the analytics work. What do we look for? How do we look for? What is it? What has our page done in the last 60 days? Because I think that's about how long they've been doing it now. And I'll go back and check. But the baseline numbers we get, the reports that we get that show the different things that we're doing, it's, it's phenomenal. So, man, I love it. And that helps. But Adam, to get back to your question is yes, we are hiring. We are, we are always looking for licensed plumbers. We're always looking for great apprentices and attitudes and things like that. We want to get people in here that fit the culture. And what, whether it's a plumber, whether it's apprentice, whatever it is, we are continuously looking for amazing people because we feel that if we can get amazing people in here, we can do better. We can grow, and, and that gives us all more opportunity. So I would say, Adam, what, what kind of job are you looking for? Walter, how did you get the idea to start a YouTube channel? Uh, and it wasn't an idea. It was really a requirement. Uh, I actually, uh, it's funny, it's perfect timing for this question. Literally, I've been getting ripped off by marketing companies for years. And that's why the fact that I have finally found one that I don't just think is good. I'm impressed by what they do, how they do it, everything about it. And the cool thing about it is I saw what they were doing for other people. And I started doing research. And then I started checking it out. And then I started looking at their page. And I started looking at what they did. Started watching a guy's YouTube channel and listening to him and learning. And, you know, the, the thing is, and I guess it's like me on YouTube now, uh, people are now reaching out to me saying, hey, I want to learn to do what you do. But I got tired of getting ripped off by marketing companies. So I decided I was going to try social media because I could not find any marketing companies that literally could speak social media clearly. They, they all had ideas. They're all like, oh, yeah, you know. Post tomorrow because it's National Pizza Day. It's like, look, what's, what's that got to do with plumbing? And literally, we, we had to figure out who could teach us social media. So I did research. And whenever I found out the one that I wanted to go to, I went. And it was really funny because, uh, and, and this literally goes straight to your question, Walter, is that I was walking down the hallway at this conference. And there's a sign or a placard right outside of a room, and it said something like, get in front of your video, something, get in front of your customers using video. And I walked in, and I, and I walked in, and I sat on the front row. I'm one of those people, when I'm there to learn, I am sitting on the front row. I, I don't want any distractions. Um, ADD, ADHD, uh, I mean, a, a fly fall, flying by can, can get my attention. And I'm, I'm literally, I'm sitting on the front row. I've got my notebook out to take notes. And this guy gets up and starts talking. And, and he literally says, YouTube is the second largest search engine on the world. And I shut my notebook and I thought, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. YouTube is where I keep my videos. And I turned my, my arm and grabbed the chair next to me because I was fixing to stand up. To walk out and I looked and the room is completely full. Not only is the room full, people are standing around the back, around the sides and all that. And I literally said, you know what? If the room is this full, this guy knows something. The next words out of his mouth were, 
and YouTube is owned by the largest search engine in the world, Google. And real quick in my head, I thought, well, if Google is going to send people to video, who do you think it'd be? And I was just like, okay, wait a minute. So I opened my notebook back up, and literally for the next 45 minutes, I took three pages worth of notes. But what I knew is I need to be doing video, I need to be doing it on YouTube, and I need to be doing it as good or better than any other plumber out there. And the cool thing about it is luckily the class that I was in, man, I learned a lot. Now, I will tell you this, and this is huge because I started coming up with a plan on the way home. That, that conference was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday I had to leave early because I had a, a live radio show in Dallas the next morning. And I literally, when I got on the plane, there was nobody in the seat next to me. I had the two fold-down trays down. I had my notebook, my iPad, my computer, and the little notepads they give you at conferences to write on because I had notes everywhere. And over the three days that I was there, and like I said, I had to leave a little bit early, but I literally, I took so many notes that I went through them on the plane on the way home. The, the next morning, I literally, yeah, owe him up. Uh, Neil, I'll, t I'll tell you about him sometime. Uh, yeah, yeah, Neil, Gary V or Darley is either one. It really doesn't matter. They're both phenomenal. Uh, the, the funny thing is, though, the next Saturday morning, I literally, I go to the radio show, I come back to the office, and I keep going through my notes, and I keep working on a plan. Sunday morning, Julie and I, we get up and we go to church. I take her home, drop her off. I come back to the office, and, and I'm going through my notes. Monday morning, I could have done what most people do when they come home from conferences. Plumbing happens. I could have just got busy and said, man, look, we're busy. We can't do this right now. I don't have time. Literally what happened is, after the plumbers went out, I called Julie and Will into the office and said, look, I want to change everything we're doing on marketing, and I want to change it right now. And that's hard to do. It's hard to just say, look, I don't know anything about this, but we need to learn it, and we need to get good about it. And, and what we did is we started studying YouTube. We started studying social media. We started studying different platforms. We started studying so many different things. But what we did is literally come up with a game plan. And right after the plumbers got out, we decided what we were gonna do and how we were gonna do it. And that's what we did. And the, re the only reason that we are where we are today is we decided, look, we're gonna start and we're gonna get good at it. We're not gonna try to be perfect. We're not gonna be, try to be perfect right now. But what we're gonna try to do is get 1% better every single video we make. And I think that we keep trying. So the big deal for me is that, that we did. We jumped in, we started trying, we started learning. And remember in the beginning, it was to drive revenue to Texas Green Plumbing, which, which is the plumbing company we're standing in. And this is where I get my plumbing jobs. This is where I hire my plumbers, my, my apprentices. This is where we, everything, this is where everything happened. And what we did is we decided the next month, April, we would start making videos and we wanted to make three a week. And it, it has been so huge because we started as Texas Green Plumbing. Then we realized we had a lot of plumbers watching our videos. So what we started doing was we started making, we, we, number one, we changed it to the expert plumber which is a title of a contest that I won with American Standard. And then we started realizing it's not just plumbers watching us. We have fencing guys like Joe Everest here. Uh, we had other plumbers. We had HVAC techs, roofers, electricians. We had all kinds of people watching our videos. So then we changed it to Roger Wakefield because, and I mean, you can ask Joe, uh, man, I want to help all the trades, not just plumbers. And, and it's, it's working because we do. We have so many trades reach out to, out to us that, that we help, that we do different things with. And, and man, guys, this stuff works. It, it really works. So I hope that answered your question. That was probably the long version, probably not the one you wanted, but it's the one you got today. Uh, 
Omar says, I'm 20 and want to get into the plumbing trade here in L.A., uh, the local union. By L.A., I'm assuming you mean Los Angeles, not Louisiana. Uh, do you think I have a chance at getting it without knowing a thing about plumbing? Absolutely. Most of the plumbers' unions hire people based on attitude. They hire people that are going to be good for the trade. And it's really funny. And Neil says, I remember the name change. You know, I asked Jeremy Vest about that, one of my first coaches. And I think at the time we were at about 350, maybe 600 subs, and told him we were wanting to change. And he says, you know what? Change. He said, uh, you, you, you're not big enough now that it's going to affect anything. Nobody's really going to notice it. The ones that do it really won't matter. So we did change. And then later from, from watching uh, Nick Nimmin and talking to Jeremy again and explaining the situation where we were at and what we wanted to do, then we changed to Roger Wakefield because at that point we had built a name. Uh, you know, we didn't just change it, or, or we did. It went from Texas Green Plumbing to the expert plumber to Roger Wakefield, the expert plumber, and, and then we ended up going on and changing it uh, just to Roger Wakefield. So it, it's been a long process, but it's been good for us, and we, we really loved it. Uh, anyway, so, sorry I got off there. Omar, look, here's the deal. If you want to get into plumbing, start applying, start talking to them, start telling them, you know, what you want to do, how you want to do it. And, and man, just learn everything you can right now. And you're in a great spot. Learn from here watching these videos. And I've made videos about the interview process through the union, how you apply to the union. We've got a link in here somewhere about how to find out what local union is closest to you, the contact information and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things you can do, but man, you are in a great place to do it. Sorry about that. Need that cold water. No, thank y'all. Uh, man, I really do enjoy what I do. I love talking about plumbing. I, I mean, you know, Sean Strong's in here. I, I saw his name up there a while ago. Uh, <laughs> Sean, man, Sean's a great plumber. And when I can talk to other great plumbers, man, we can talk for hours uh, about this and that. And what do you think about this? Because we're all in different areas, so we all do things a little bit different. And I'm not one of those people to say, well, man, I'm in Texas. The way we do it's right. The way y'all do it's wrong. That's probably true. Uh, anyway, uh, I normally don't say that out loud, though. But the funny thing is, man, I respect plumbers from across the United States. And when you meet them, and you meet a good one, you talk to them, and you can tell by the, the things they say and the pictures they send and whatnot. Well, I got to tell you, man, I just I love what I do. And to have this opportunity to be able to get in front of other people and talk to them about the trade that we're in, the career that we have, the opportunities that we have, I think it's phenomenal. And every one of us, and, and this is the, the, the long way to get back around to it, Omar, every single one of us started with zero experience at all. So the opportunity you have is phenomenal. I hope you use it. I hope it works. And I, I, I hope it makes your life amazing. Uh, let me see here. Julia's a plumbing nerd. But you knew that. Back into the forum real quick. Oh, and we got a, another chat up here real quick. Giovanni says, uh, licensed plumber. Don't have a lot of experience in the service. Uh, will you recommend? And the, the only way to get experience is, is to get out and get a job and do it. You can watch these videos to learn it. But getting out. And, and, and look, I've got videos talking about it. This is how you get to experience. You get out and you do it. And, and once you get out and do it, it is huge. Susie Valentin, the realtor, is in here. Good to have you in here. How are you doing today? Yeah, it's, it's neat, too, when you do this because th this is what's neat. You jump into other people's lives. You jump into other people's trainings and questions and, and stuff like this. And when I jump in somebody else's live, you know, I always try to bring value to them too. Uh, meaning if I'm on Neil's live, uh, uh, Nick's live, D's live, Daniel's, man, Rob Bellis, there's so many people that, that I get in there. And when people ask questions and I have value, if I can bring value to somebody, 
Uh, I always try. And, and it, it's neat to see when real estate agents jump in here like, like Susie Valentin. The reason being, thank you so much. Susie, happy new year to you. I hope it is amazing. And I hope that real estate is doing as good for you as it is here in Dallas because, man, Dallas real estate is booming. And, and that's a great thing to have. Uh, so the, the, the cool thing about it, though, is you jump in and you bring value to people and, and we all learn from each other. I, I can go to Susie's channel. I can go to Neil's channel. I, I can go to anybody's channel and watch and I always pick up something. And I think that's what's really neat because I learned from, from watching Nick and D, you, you go in and, and look at other people's channels and from watching them do it so many times, I can look at channels now and say, okay, I see what's wrong here. And if this person would do this, and if this person would do this, and there's so many good things, but, you know, and, and I like this, try and make mistakes. Uh, Norm's Web, and you got it right there. Cool thing about it, though, is this is a great community. We all try to help each other. I want nothing but the best for Neil and Susie, uh, Sean. Uh, you know, and, and it's funny because I had a plumber reach out to me one day and says, hey, I really love what you're doing on social media, but you would never help me. And I replied back to the comment. I said, well, why wouldn't I? He said, well, I'm in Plano. I'm in your service area. I said, okay, there's 8 million people in my service area. I can't get to all of them. But if I know you're doing good things, why wouldn't I refer people to you? And that blew their mind. But, man, that's what the, the YouTube community is. Everybody wants to help everybody, and I think it is phenomenal. Dark Darkness, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Dallas Real Estate is booming. Yeah, everybody's leaving California. You, you know what? Matter of fact, I, I want to look straight at the main camera. All you people leaving California and headed this way, Oklahoma is cheaper. Just go a little bit north. It's cheaper. Move your tail up there. Texas is getting full of Cali people. Uh, no, I'm joking. I have nothing against Cali people, uh, but Oklahoma is a lot cheaper. All right. Next one here. And guys, we are in the forum. If you've got questions, please jump over in the forum and ask them. Uh, James P says, also, you're amazing. You actually say my name right. Thanks again. Uh, if you would get to me with the recommendations, that alone would be a lifesaver. Keep being cool. Uh, I, I would say go in and post a comment because I'll, I don't, I, I don't write all this stuff down. And, and here's what I would tell you, James, jump over in the subreddit, uh, Roger Wakefield posts, post your question, comment, stuff like that. Uh, I, I will help you out all that I can. And at least that way I know I've got something there to remind me to get back to it. Plus all of us having plumbing. You, you know, and, and Susie, since, since the COVID thing's been going on uh, and the quarantining, people have been at home using their plumbing a whole lot more. So plumbing business has been busy. Since people have been home, our social media has been busy. We have just exploded this year. And, man, it, it's been great for us. But the the whole thing, the, the big thing about it is, you know, we've got to put – plumbers and this is something we teach all our plumbers and guys if y'all aren't here now and you're a plumber i want you to think about it you need to assume every house you walk in has covid and, and wear your mask wear your latex gloves wear your floor cover floor savers wear a tyvek suit if you need to if you're going to be working around uh sewage and you know you can get it on you in your clothes in your face whatever it is wear a suit wear a mask Wear a face shield. Wear the things you got to wear. And, and remember, we have all this stuff for our guys, and we tell them every day, assume every house you walk in has COVID. And, man, take care of yourselves because it really is, it is that serious. Alex says, hi, I work for a municipality up in Michigan. We regularly jet our sanitary lines, and we have found that in newer constructed homes, we end up blowing up toilets. Do you have any idea why this is we don't have issues in the older homes? You know, I don't. Uh, that is really kind of strange. 
I tell you what would be fun, and, and and I say fun because I'm a plumber, would be to go in and do a post mortem on one where you've blown it up, climb up in the attic, run a camera down the vents, look and see is something clogged, is something capped. Did they do atmospheric vents where you can't get air out fast enough? So the only place, only place for it to go is a toilet. Uh, man, that's crazy. That would be my thought, though, is that the newer homes may have atmospheric or, uh, yeah, uh, atmospheric vents, uh, blah, 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 studer vents. So maybe air can't come out of these as fast as it does a real vent. So when you jet it, when you push it, that air's got to go somewhere else, which may be a toilet. That's kind of a crazy way to do it, but man, it, it makes sense that way. How is everybody doing today? I like that too, Joe. Done is better than perfection. Huge mental hurdle. And just getting it done and getting it out there. Uh, when did all the plumbers click with you? Uh, you know, George, it's really funny. I don't, <laughs> all the plumbers haven't. Uh, the, the crazy thing is there's a lot of plumbers out there that don't like me. And, and, and I think it's funny because I, uh, I'm not in here trying to sell. Uh, when, 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 when I show stuff like this, the, the Walt angle drill, man, it's cause I, man, this thing is fantastic. Uh, if rigid sends me one, if Milwaukee sends me one, I, I talk about it. I play with it. I say what it'll do. And Anytime I can get a 60, 60 volt angle drill, I'm going to play with it. And I got to tell you, that thing's got more power than I do. So I love stuff like that. The funny thing about it, though, is, I, you know, I'm trying to help people get into the trades. And those of y'all that don't know, we're starting another YouTube channel. It's called The Trade Talks. Uh, I don't know if one of the mods can put a link to it in here or not. But. We've got another YouTube channel. We're starting. We don't even have videos yet on it, and I think we're up to. We're getting close to three hundred subscribers already, and we've got the first one recorded. We've got to do some. We've got to do some more interviews, but we've got a magazine out called the Trade Talks. You can go check it out. This is where what we're doing to help people get into all the trades. I, I've talked about plumbing for two and a half years now, but the neat thing is. You know, the, the trades are a great career for people. There are so many people out there that can improve their lives just by learning their way up out of the situation they're in. And it's really funny because I look at students in high school that they're going to get out. They're not going to go to college. They don't know what they're going to do. They never even look at the trades. And the bad thing is it's probably because a teacher has told them, Hey, look, if you work with your hands, you're never going to make a good living. If you do this, if you do this, and, and, and I got to tell you, as a plumber, even before I owned my own plumbing company, just as a plumber in the union, I, I had a truck, I had a motorcycle, I had my own house, uh, my bills were paid, and I could go on vacation. I could pretty much do what I wanted to do. So guys, I'll tell you, there's nothing wrong with the trades. And the reason that I'm, I'm starting another channel called The Trade Talks is there's a lot of plumbers that, that, that watch this, but there's a lot of tradespeople that won't because I'm a plumber. Now, the people that do get in here, I love the fact that they're like, look, I could take the word plumber out of what you just said and put in electrician, put in roofer, put in window cleaner, landscaper, HVAC tech, it doesn't matter. I could put that word in and you're talking to me. Uh, Neil, thank you so much, our brother. The cool thing about it is the things that I talk about here about plumbing can help anybody in the trades. If you want to be a better blank, work harder, study more, learn more. And when I say harder, I don't mean harder like, you know, more physical hard work. Learn to work smarter with your brain and it's going to help you. Richard says, Mr. Wakefield, what's your biggest goal you have currently in life? Uh, Richard, I, I want to create a digital way for people to learn more about the trades. And, and that's where the trade talks and the magazine and all that come in. Uh, I want to teach people that want to learn more about plumbing, roofing, electrical, HVAC, landscaping, whatever it is. 
They want to learn to get into the trades. They want to learn to get better at the trades. They want to learn to get into a position to open their own company or they've already got their own company and, and they want to learn to use social media to help it grow. There's so many different things that I want to do, but, but that's the first one that can help learning how to put together a digital product that can teach people how to grow, how to get better and how to, how to learn. Uh, the next one is I, I want to grow the plumbing company. We, we've been working on this five years. We're doing things right. It's starting to get better. And the harder we work at it, the more we, we learn. The more we learn, the harder we work at it. And it's just it's, it's a full-time deal back and forth trying to get better, but, but we are getting better. And, and to me, that is huge. Uh, the, the, the other one is, and I don't know if, if – is there anybody in here from Houston? Uh, because my, my, my third goal this year, Mr. Richardson is make sure I said that right. Richardson. Yes. And that's funny because our company is in Richardson, Texas. Uh, but if there's anybody in Houston, let me know because that's on our list too, is Julie and I have the Houston region for master networks and we're, we're helping businesses grow down there. And it, it's really good for us to get down there, which we hadn't been able to lately, but to get down, work with entrepreneurs, do what we can to help them grow their businesses. And man, we love it. Getting to work with other business owners, let them learn the things that we've learned, networking, social media, different things, whatever it is to grow our business and help them. It's phenomenal. So Richard, those are my goals. Uh, what, what is yours? If you're in the chat real quick, everybody drop in. What is your biggest goal this year? Is it is it self improvement? Is it financial improvement? What all is it? And, and it may be all of the above. But what is your biggest goal this year? Because mine is to learn more, to educate myself, to get better, and it's in a lot of these different ways. And one D ten T Bill says after I flush, have to push down the handle again uh, to get to quit running. Either, yeah, you've either got the chain's not adjusted right, it's got a bad flapper, that there, there could be a lot of different things, and it, it, it kind of takes the fun out of it. To grow an awesome mustache, I love it. Give better value. Now, that, that one is phenomenal. When we learned that, our YouTube channel really did start taking off. Bringing value is what it's all about, and that and engaging. Uh, the people that do jump in and leave comments, uh, salt and cracker starting a business. I love it. Uh, it's just, it's, it's been really good for us. Uh, and I like that. Susie says, w wishing much growth and success for you guys. You know, we're, we're, we're learning what to do to grow. We're learning what to do to get better and, and how to get better. And as long as and Joy put in here about being an accountability partner, it, it's learning how to work with your partner and work better with your partner, communicate better with your partner, and then hold each other accountable is huge. You're going to grow faster. You're going to grow better. Uh, and this is a good one too, Randy Harden, uh, becoming more efficient and handling my money better. Uh, we we literally met a, an owner of a, a plumbing company in California, owns multiple branches. And the funny thing is he does about $80 million a year in business and revenue. And the one thing he said that is the best thing for him is he literally spends a lot of time teaching plumbers how to manage their money. That makes them better. And, and I think that is wonderful. Salting Cracker, I love that. Uh, the lead GA. Uh, man, when, when I got my lead AP, it blew my mind. Uh, I knew I wanted to do it. It blew my mind as to how hard it was and what it was going to take. But I did it. I focused on it and got it done. And, man, that's tough. Uh, 1D10T Bill says, my real goal is to keep your H2S safety job and to get in better shape. 
Uh, it's funny. Uh, me and Julia are, are eating better. We just started reading here this last week, the JJ Virgin diet. And I love it because there's like seven foods. She says you have got to give up and they are eggs, sugar, dairy, soy, peanuts, wheat. Julie, I'm lost. Maybe grains or something. Uh, I got milk, dairy cheese, or dairy cheese, milk, yada, yada, yada. Man, what is it? Sugar. Yeah, I mean, if I didn't mention sugar, that's it. Yeah. Uh, but, but man, it's hard to find foods like that that you can eat and don't mess it. Or, or you can get away from every day, and it's really hard. All right, back over in the forum real quick. Patrick says, do you find most of the business you get is from word of mouth? I live in northeast Pennsylvania, and maybe it's just this area. 90% of our business from people recommending us to their family and friends. I want to start a website, but not sure it's worth it. And that was probably my mindset when I started doing social media is – I knew that I knew that word of mouth worked and I was already doing networking and that literally probably that's probably what kept us going because networking is big for us. But that's what social media is. You say word of mouth and your biggest referral is people telling friends, man, if they can get online and, and make a post about the plumber that came out and found the leak that nobody else could find. The, the plumber that came out and saved them money by, by replacing something a different way, by doing something different. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And if you can learn to use social media and have people share your information, share your value, it is huge. So social media to me is word of mouth. And I, I mean, think about it. Uh, Every time we make a video, it gets thousands and thousands of views. And it's really interesting because social media has been great for us for real estate agents because real estate agents, we put out valuable information. What is a sewer test? What is a water test? Why is the sewer and water test important? What is a hydrostatic test? What's the slab leak? How do you fix the slab leak? There's a lot of different things there. But the cool thing is you've literally got to look at it and say, okay, if I put out valuable information that a Dallas real estate here that I'm connected with on LinkedIn or YouTube or wherever wants to share my information with her customers or, or his buyers or whatever it is, hey, I want to tell you all about a sewer test. I'm going to send you a video this plumber in Dallas named Roger does. This is something you need to do. Here's why we recommend it. Why introduce yourself to one person at a time, word of mouth, when social media can introduce you to 1,000 at a time or 100,000 at a time? And things like that are really big. And if you learn to use it right, man, this stuff works. Joe's right. Social media is word of mouth on steroids. Social media helped me uh, help sell many friends' homes, which I haven't seen in years. So the, this stuff works. It is phenomenal. And like Julie, uh, on the diet, cooking at home is the best way to stick to the plan. Social media is the same thing. Uh, stick to the plan because we decided, hey, we're going to post this often, this much, about this. We had a content idea and strategy, and it's worked. So Eli says, I'm non-union, but I want to go to an apprentice program. Uh, Eli, I would reach out to PHCC. Uh, PHCC is, is actually also still, they're kind of like the union. They're, they're trying to recruit for the trades. They've got a big thing going on. They're, they want to recruit 75,000 new people into the trades, I think, in the next five years. That helps a lot because the trades are short, good people. And, and it makes a big difference. Where did I see? 
Sean Strong says, watch Roger on YouTube for probably six to 12 months. Started joining his LinkedIn live shows. Now I feel like I'm friends with the best plumber in Texas. You guys should check out his LinkedIn. Sean, thank you for that. You know, the, and the neat thing is all these platforms are different. And don't get me wrong. Sean can come comment on one of my videos here. And if I see it, I'll comment back. But man, when he jumps into the LinkedIn live, I mean, man, he knows Julie. He knows Amber. He knows me. He knows Will. It, it's, it's a great conversation. And you do, you build relationships with people and, and really, man, what is better than that? If you can build relationships with people and you get to know them, people buy from people they know, love, trust, and they're connected to. And if you can be that connected person, and I recommend for social media, because like Joe said, it's like it's on steroids. This is word of mouth on steroids. The, the video and I'm just looking because I don't know right now, but I want to be honest about it. Uh, the video that we put out this morning. So this video has been out for seven hours and it's already been seen 11,000 times. Now that's not even a lot for us for a first day. I mean, it's good. Uh, I want to see if I can tell. It's good, but that's only ranking third out of the top 10. So, so those aren't our best numbers. They're not amazing numbers, but, but it's a good number. So my thought is, in that time that I could have gone and met one person, eight minutes, we've got a video up that people are watching for over five and a half minutes, and they're getting information. And that top of mind, that, that recognizable logo, brand, trade, whatever you want to call it, it, it man, it works. So I love that. Man, this has been great. Uh, jump back over here in the forum. Jim says, had a washer and sink installed in my basement with a pump. When the washer is in its drain cycle, it backs up into the sink. Why? Because that drain cycle is pumped out so fast that whatever size line it is going into the pump or the size pump it is isn't ejecting fast enough, and that water's got to go somewhere. Trust me, you'd rather it back up into the sink than in the floor. But it, uh, man, it, it's better the sink than the floor, but you may want to get a bigger drain pipe or a bigger ejection pump. To, to pump it out because that, that pump pumps out. So don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, time at 156 was 556 here, uh, or no, 456 in the evening. So I don't know if you mean 156 in the morning or evening. Uh, man, good, good luck on that, Jim, because that can be a pain sometimes. Uh Alex says, I'm 11 years old, still watch your plumbing videos because your attitude and how smart you are. Uh, TBH, I'm surrounded by dumb people. <coughs> what gave you the attitude you have today? Man, I love that. And I'll tell you what, Alex, for, for, for 11 years old, I, I love that you recognize it as an attitude because that is what it is. Uh, you know, I think what gave me that attitude is the fact that Look at what I'm doing. And Neil and Joe, they've seen me at conferences. They've seen me at seminars. That They know what it's like. They go to them to learn. They do all kinds of cool things. Here's what I'll tell you is the first year that I walked into a social media marketing conference, there were no plumbers there. There were no tradespeople. I asked for plumbers, electricians, HVAC techs, roofers, anybody like that. Now, I believe Joe was there, but we didn't even meet that first year. But that's the year that I walked in and learned, wow, I can use social media to grow. So, Alex, what I'm going to tell you is, is, is a cool story. I, I literally, I walked in, I went up, I registered, I showed up early as I always do. And I, I got there, and when I realized there was nobody there, and I've had so many people ask me along the way, why didn't you just leave? 
why didn't you realize, hey, I'm in the wrong spot. There's nobody here like me. And what I will tell you is when I saw that, when, that when I saw there's nobody there like me, I asked myself, why aren't people here learning to do this? And I knew that marketing people were learning it, but why aren't the trades people, why aren't their customers learning it? So I jumped in with both feet. Thank God that I did. And, and I'll get back to it here in just a second. Tarek, thank you for the super chat. It says, what do you consider good septic maintenance? We've been having a lot of scum layer backups lately. It's never been an issue before. Tarek, the thing I'll ask you is, have you have your, had your septic tank pumped and cleaned lately? I know some homes that have to do that once every year, some that do it once every five years. I don't know what your leach field like, anything like that. Is it an aerobic or a non-aerobic system? Uh, there, there's a lot of differences that it could be or a lot of things it could be. And, and man, it's just, it's hard to give you an answer like that. But my first question will be, how long has it been since you had it pumped out, cleaned out, and start right there? A Alex, back to you is, I think the fact that I, re I walked into a conference where I was, man, I, I was a unicorn. There, there was nobody there like me. I learned, I learned that of the opportunity and, and I saw it in a way other people didn't. I knew then that I wanted to do something nobody else was doing. At least nobody was doing it the way I, I saw it, the way I wanted to do it. And to me, that's huge. And, and that's probably why I've got an attitude about it. Because even at that first conference, people were telling me, you can't use YouTube, you can't use social media really for local growth. And I have found a way to do it. Our plumbing company is doing great because of what I'm doing on social media. Uh, Joe, you're, you're in here. It, has social media helped your fencing business in Springfield, Missouri? Uh, if it has, how can you tell? Well, what's what's it done, or how are you how are you checking your ROI on that? Uh, because me, I, I see what it's done. I see what it's done for my business. I, I see what it's done for not just the, the plumbing company, but for me personally. Now I've got I've got tradespeople across the United States saying, "Look, I want to learn to do what you do." I've got business owners, not just trades, across the United States say, "Hey, I want to learn how to do this." Uh, I, I, I told y'all earlier the other day about about jumping into a, a clubhouse chat room. Grant Cardone's in there. He's talking. I asked a question. Uh, Grant started answering it. Then one of his associates jumped in and says, hey, man, I want to answer this. He says, look, Roger's doing exactly what Grant's talking about. Learn how to do it and get in and do it. Don't just learn it and go home and, and shut the door. Get in here, learn it, do it, implement it, make it happen. And one of the other things is invest in yourself. Uh, Joe Everest is at conferences. I'm at conferences. It does not matter how good I'm, I'm learning this, there's more to learn. And, and I'll be at the next conference, and I'll be at the one after that because I want to get better. I want to become one of the very best at what I do, and I go learn, but also come home and try things on my own. So, man, I think that's why I've got the attitude, and I, I, I think that it's well-deserved. Uh, I walked into a conference where I was a unicorn, and I walked out saying, look, I can learn to do this, and, and it helps. Uh, and I like that Joe Everest says, absolutely, my office staff is constantly hearing. I saw Joe talking about this on YouTube, and I would really like that at my house. And, man, it's huge. That That's exactly what it's all about. Susie, man, I, I love it. Uh, I, I think it's so cool that we have the opportunity – to look at something like social media and say, why can't I do that? And, you know, I tell people all the time, people are like, well, you know, it works for you because you, you've got a good voice. It works for you because you've got a funny mustache. It, it works for you because, you know, you don't have to do plumbing. You can just stand in front of the camera all day and play. And, and, and it's like, man, no, it, it's, it works for me because I've studied it. I've learned it. Gary Vee says something. He says, look, Davids kill Goliaths every day. And remember, when I started doing social media, I was on 
American Standards YouTube page. I was on American Standards Facebook page, and I wanted to help them grow. And, and look, I love American Standard, but literally the girl that I talked to laughed at me, and she said, hey, she said, look, we have a YouTube professional. You're not it. You just need to stand in front of the camera and smile. And that hit me as really funny. Now, the bad thing is they had about 10,000 subscribers at the time. I had about 2,000. Now I've got 234 and they've got 14,000. And I love what they're doing. I just, I think that they, there's a lot of things that, and I'm not saying anything bad about American Standard. Don't get me wrong. I love their product. But if you look at what a lot of the big channels are doing, and, and, and look, Susie's studied this long enough now. Joe's studied it long enough. The Urban Explorer, they've all studied it long enough. They can all tell you by looking at some of these bigger channels, we can look at it and say, well, here's what they're doing wrong. Here's what they're doing wrong. Here's what they're doing wrong. But they don't want to do it right. And, and that's what's hurting them. You look at a little guy like me. Remember, I'm a plumber in Richardson, Texas. Nothing more. I'm a plumber. I don't have a degree in marketing. I don't have a degree in advertising. I don't have a degree in anything at all like that. But I got to tell you that by learning to do what we've done, we have got the attention that those bigger companies want. And, and that is where it starts paying off for you because they want the attention that you're getting and they want to help you. They want to work with you. They want to sponsor you. They want to do whatever it is. And, and I love the fact that I've got – the DeWalt's, the Milwaukee's, the Rigid's saying, hey, look, we, we would love for you to look at this product and tell us what you think and yada, yada, yada. And, man, it helps. It, it helps that you, know, you can grow the way you can in this and, and you can compete against the Goliaths. So what do you want to do? And, and, and <laughs> Alex, it's probably a, a long way for me to go around it, but and that's the thing, and that's why I've got the attitude is, look, I jumped into an arena that everybody said, look, you're, you're a shrimp. You're never going to make it. You can never use it for local. You can never do this. And, oh, by the way, has anybody told you? You're just a plumber. The thing is, at the end of the day, I can make it educational. I can make it entertaining. I can make it fun. And that's what people are looking for. People want to be entertained while they learn. And if I can teach people why they need to have a sewer water test done on a house before they buy it, because it can save them hundreds of thousands of dollars, why wouldn't they want to watch that video? So Alex, when, when you go from where I've come from and you get to the point where people are asking you, hey, how do I do what you do? You, you do, you get an attitude. And I, I hope it's not cocky, but man, my thing is, I love what I do, and I'm getting to talk to everybody in the world about it. And that gives me an amazing feeling about life. So what I will tell you is I hope you find something that you love doing just as well and do it because it's huge. Uh, I've got another Alex here. It says, Roger, thanks for your live Q&A. Uh, Got a 213 channel uh, subscribers on the channel started about two months ago. And if you got 213 and you've been doing it two months, you are doing fantastic. Uh, and and I'll, I'll tell you, that is about the point that I started getting YouTube coaching. It, it's funny because, I mean, I've had people reach out to me that have 100 subscribers. I've had people that reach out to me that have zero. Look, I want to start. Uh I've had people reach out to me that have 50,000 subscribers and say, look, I want to grow. I want to do like you do. Uh, I am putting together a course. It's not ready yet. Uh, and, and I'm just going by what you're talking, your question. Uh, putting together a course. It's not ready yet. I want to teach tradespeople to do what I do. And it doesn't have to be just tradespeople. And that's the funny thing is I've had marketing companies reach out to me. I've had salon owners. I've had day spa owners. I've had roofing companies, actually roofing organizations. Matter of fact, next week I'm going to bring uh, Dmitry Lipinski in from Roofing Insights. Uh, he's going to come to town. He's going to interview me. I'm going to interview him. 
And it is really going to be fun because he's a great guy. And I went and spoke at his conference in August, October. Oh, it's December. God, man, it's going by quick. Oh, the first week of December, I thought, wait, it wasn't that long ago. I went and spoke at his conference the beginning of December and did four breakout sessions. And, and man, it was great. The roofers are like, oh my gosh, I want to, I want to learn how to do what you do. I want to learn to use it to grow business in my local in my local area. And, and it was great. So he says, yes, people shouldn't just rely on home inspector and also run a camera through the line. And, and, and so there, there's so many different things people can do. Uh, John, thank you, brother. Uh, I work on this every day. Matter of fact, I, I use, what's it called? Uh, Wonder Grow, Grow, Magic Grow. Julie, what's the stuff that I put on it? Uh, it's the stuff you put on plants to help it grow. What? Miracle Grow. That's it. See, I knew you would know. I put Miracle Grow on it three times a week. Uh, Neil, only you, brother. Only you. Uh, okay, got Tarek. Thank you. <clears throat> so the cool thing is, and, and, and I would say this to anybody, you can use social media to get your message out there no matter what business you're in, no matter what business you want to be in. Now, if it's a business you're not doing yet, get some experience. Learn it. Learn it and learn to do it better than anybody else. Uh, you know, J Julie put in here, like Joe did, look, people call us and say, look, we want y'all because we've seen what you do on YouTube. We know how you do it. The, the neat thing about it is, Alex, how are you? I like that. Thank you. Uh, and you're more than welcome. The, the, the cool thing is that social media, it's only going to get bigger, y'all. And I love the fact that I've learned to use it like I have because I get to help people now. But over the next two, three, five years, it's going to keep getting bigger. And there's nothing saying that any one of y'all cannot start doing social media right now to do the exact same thing. Uh, metal seam roofing. Love that stuff. And to, to get to see it from a roofer's point of view, that, that would be mind-blowing to me to watch that. And, and I have people all the time. I actually went on a job today, a VR personal fitness center. And, you know, we, we went through, we looked at the plumbing thing. Well, when I first got there, they wanted to talk social media because that's how they found me. I went and looked at the plumbing thing. We talked about different ideas and options and whatnot. And the cool thing about it is that then went to uh, – yeah, I was going to say that's okay. Uh, then I talked to the owner, and he's like, look, how do you do that YouTube? And, and we talked about it. And it's so cool because, man, what they're doing is unique. Now, we just did a VR plumbing video. And, and matter of fact, I need to make a note because I need to do another one. Uh, I need to call somebody, though. Uh, the, the, the cool thing about it is that we can do anything. Think about it. I'm a plumber. I did a VR plumbing game video because it's fun. And you can have fun doing anything you do, and, and you get people's attention. And... This VR fitness center, which I think is is mind blowing, and, and I really want to go over there and see it. Uh, Sean, thank you so much, brother, for jumping in. I really do appreciate it. And actually, we're we're probably fixing to get off here too. I've talked a lot, uh, so I'm, I'm about ready myself. What I will tell you though is, the cool thing about social media, it has made life wonderful. It, it's made it fun because I've been able to talk to plumbers like Sean, like Mark, like God, so many all around the world. And, and it's cool because when, when we get in here and talk, man, it's like we're best friends just sharing information. 
talking about this is how I do this, this is how I do that, and it is neat, and, and it's because of what we're doing in here. So what I will tell y'all is, I know, Julie, if you if you ever take my VR headset away, I'm in trouble. Uh, and actually, God, where is it? It's normally in here. We may have carried it in there for a video. I was actually going to put it on. Uh, you got it back there? Okay. Uh, yeah, here, let me see it real quick. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you what I what I what I get to do for fun, for work. Excuse me, I, I said that all wrong. Uh, okay, so so literally, and this is just so y'all know how much fun it is. Uh, and I can't see anything now. It's like I'm in a, in a black room. Uh, let me think how this goes. Just like that. Yeah. So th this is this is it. And I mean, man, when you're in this, when you look around, you can see everything. So we pulled this out, uh, and I think Will had this idea, so we, it was just great. Uh, he's like, "Hey, look, I, I found this. Uh, found this plumbing game. It'd be neat if we did a video. You could play it." And the neat thing is, I have great ideas. So I sat down in there and talked to Grayson. Tell you how Julie took it away from me. Doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, and Julie's right. If y'all have not subscribed to the Trade Talks, jump over there on YouTube, subscribe to that channel, because we're going to be doing some really cool things over there. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. But we're always looking at doing something different. That's what this was about. And y'all make it where I can do that. When y'all come in, you watch these videos, you subscribe, you comment. Uh, if you're not subscribed, man, please do. That way you get to see everything as it comes out, when it comes out. And we're trying to get it where I can jump in right after videos post and comment. <coughs> so it's a great way to come in and talk and ask me questions and whatnot. But what I'll tell you is this. I love the team that we have around us. We get to do some really cool things. And with this wonderful team, uh, we're always coming up with new ideas. We had a great meeting this morning talking and having fun coming up with ideas hey i want to do this hey i want to do this and and finding things and ideas and ways that we could do it uh and it works <clears throat> so got one more question in the form then we're going to get out of here remember guys next time y'all are in if you've got a question go up in the form put it in there we try to go through them in order, get to them as quick as we can. <clears throat> uh, the neat thing about it is it, it, it works. Uh, we can go through them, answer questions, knock it out, move on to the next, <coughs> and, and have fun doing it. If you're not following or, or joined over in the subreddit group, Go to Reddit, go to Roger Wakefield Posts. That's where you can see where we get our videos, where we get our pictures. People post stuff over there. We pick out the best that we like or the ones that y'all like the best. We get the most comments on. Share it over on YouTube. Make a reaction video or something like that and have fun with it. And also, if you want to see the fastest growing plumbing channel on TikTok, go check out Roger Wakefield because Liz has done fantastic there. And I just lost a camera. I lost this camera over here. Uh, don't worry about it. We're, we're, I've got this one here, and we'll, we'll get done after that. So perfect timing, guys. We're going to have to get out of here before we lose a second camera. But last one is, why do you do this for a living? Colin, what I'll tell you, and, and a lot of it before, I, I plumb because it, it's a trade I'm passionate about. I, I love it. I think it's exciting. I love the fact that I get to help people. Um why I do this part of it is it started out as advertising. It started out as marketing. It was a way for me to build a community, hopefully so that local customers would find out about what we do, how we do, and want to be part of it and want to use us. I wanted to teach them how to do plumbing, how to fix things that they could fix. Then I realized I had more plumbers and tradespeople getting into the videos and watching and learning how to do what we do. And the funniest thing is it grew from there. So 
That's why I do plumbing, and that's why I do this. I love what I'm doing. So anyway, guys, I want to say thanks to the moderators, uh, Neil, the Urban Explorer. Thanks to Susie for jumping in. Uh, Susie Valentin, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Realtor, if y'all have not subscribed to her channel, to the Urban Explorer, uh, I don't know if Sean's putting videos out here now or not. Uh, I know that he is on LinkedIn. But here's the deal. Guys, you can connect with us. You can follow me on TikTok, which is great. Man, the fastest growing plumbing channel on TikTok. It's wonderful. Uh, Liz has done a fantastic job. Uh, Grayson, Austin, Will, uh, Amber Mendoza, Julie, Neil, the Urban Explorer. Brother, love you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. I, I swear, every time I think of you, I think about you cutting a hole on the side of that van. I'm like, oh, my God, what the heck is he doing? Uh, and I know what you were doing. So, anyway, it's great. Uh, Susie Valentin, thank you for jumping in here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Standing Seam Channel, Alex, good to have you in here. Uh, I hope that I hope that y'all learned something from this, whether it's to be a better tradesman, to be into the trades, to open your own company one day, or maybe you have your own company and you want to learn how to grow on social media. I hope that you get something. I hope you learn something. Blake Drury, good to have you in here. Uh, I know it's a little late. You jumped in late. We're getting ready to jump out. But thank you all very much. Uh, great having you in here. Joe Everest, yes. Uh, that's the other one. I was going to say, man, I know there's someone else. If you have not subscribed to Joe, to Susie, to the Urban Explorer, subscribe to him. Follow us on TikTok, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Connect with us. Instagram is the other one. That is the one where, man, we're really getting a lot of attention, the things we're doing. If we're not connected on Instagram, do. And if you're in Clubhouse, oh, my gosh, I'm starting to have a lot of fun over there. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and come back. And if you hadn't subscribed, please do so. Last one is subscribe to the Trade Talks because we're going to start doing some cool stuff over there. Thank you to you all. I really do appreciate it. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.